The following is a sponsored program furnished by the Today's Home Remodeler Television Network. Welcome to today's Home Remodeler. I'm Stuart Keith and on today's show, well, we're looking at indoor air quality options for your home. We'll begin with our HVAC specialist, Scott Knockreiner from Temperature Systems, as he explains what indoor air quality is and what it means to a homeowner. Along the way, we'll learn how improving indoor air quality and comfort really begins with continuously circulating the air in your home and we'll see various components that can be added to new and existing systems, including UV lights in the ductwork, high efficiency filters, and whole house humidification and dehumidification systems, all of which can dramatically improve a home's indoor air quality. So let's get started with Scott Knockreiner from Temperature Systems after these messages. With all that's going on in the world these days, it's likely most of us are spending more time in our homes. So on today's show, we're going to look at ways to improve a home's indoor air quality and comfort. So let's get started with our HVAC specialist, Scott Knockreiner, out at the Temperature Systems Training Center. Well, Scott, great to have you on today's show. And you know, I love visiting the training center out here at Temperature Systems, just being able to see the latest technology and behind the covers. And on today's show, we wanna get into indoor air quality. And that's really at the forefront with a lot of people these days because we're living in a pandemic world. But whether we're in a pandemic world or just normal times, it should be at the forefront because think about how much time we spend in our homes and why wouldn't we wanna live in the cleanest environment possible? Yeah, absolutely. One of the things that uh, people don't realize is even before the pandemic started, actually 90% of people's times was spent indoors. Wow. Now with the pandemic, you can only assume that that number has even gone further, which makes it more and more important that the air that we have indoors is actually as clean as it can be. And fortunately for all us homeowners out there and business owners alike, there are technologies and products out there that can help us do just that, right? Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things that we'll look at here, this is the, the blower motor. And when we think about indoor air quality, it all starts with the blower. If you are not able to move the air, you are not able to pull the particles out, you're not able to work on humidity, you're not able to work on a lot of the different things that we talk about in indoor air quality. So when I think about a typical home, there's dead spaces way at the back. And this is why we always talk about why it needs to be designed properly for air movement. Because if you're not running that 24 seven, those dead areas way in the back are gonna be just that. I mean, it's stale, stagnant air. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things that's, that's changed in the last 10 years or so is that it's become much more efficient to run this blower 24 seven all year round. And actually for pennies on the dollar compared to what it used to be with, with older systems. That's a great reason to consider upgrading your 15 or 20 year old furnace right there because we want clean indoor air. And the way to do it cost effectively is to have the latest greatest blower technology in our furnaces. Absolutely. Okay, so let's just quickly overview this because like I said, I love looking inside. So you have the blower here, the burner, it blows it over. And so the airflow flows up and comes back through here. And this I recognize from past shows, this is behind the, the cover of a capture and kill filtration system, right? That we'll see later in today's show. Yep, this is an older model, but this is one of the first generations of the air purifiers that Evolution has. This is an older one, but what we'll see is a newer one later in the show from a home that we're going to. Now, following that airflow from the bottom up, this is a great opportunity to look behind the plenum and see what's in here. Now, as I understand it, this is the indoor air coil. 
Yes, it is. And, and what the coil does is it works in conjunction with your air conditioner. There's two different things that your air conditioner is doing. It is trying to bring cool air into the house, which this is what this coil does, is it, it helps bring cool air across the moisture that it is trying to pull out of the home, mm -hmm. is what creates the cold air that, that ends up going through your, your ductwork. So it actually cools and dehumidifies your home? That's correct. And that's why the moisture sits on here. Is think of it as a cold glass of water on a hot day. That condensation comes off. And really, that's the same thing that is happening here. Oh, and is that why you have the UV lights above it? Yes, theoretically, you could put UV lights anywhere in your ductwork, but as the air moves past these UV lights, it has to have enough time to penetrate some of the particles and some of the airborne bacteria that is in the ductwork, and that's why the biggest place where some of these particles can sit is on this coil because it's so wet in the moisture between mold, mildew, other spores, funguses that could sit there. These UV lights can spend that entire time penetrating on this coil. Oh, and so really it's not affecting the air itself as much as it's kind of a preemptive strike on the moisture that could harbor bacteria, mold spores that could ultimately get through if they were allowed to live in here. Absolutely. Okay, now if I wanted to add one of these UV light systems to my existing furnace, is that possible? Yeah, and that's a good point, Stuart. The UV light technology is somewhat new. It's not in the last couple of years, but it's a somewhat new technology. And if you have an older system, it is possible that some of the components that are inside your system here may not be UV rated. Oh, and so if you have a plastic in there that isn't, I gotta believe that just become brittle and crack. So a great case in point of working with a, an experienced professional that can get you the right products for your situation. But at the end of the day, most likely you can add this to your system. Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, I'd love to spend all day here and keep looking at the latest technology, but on today's show, we get to get out into the real world, visit that house we just mentioned, and see some of the latest technologies in action. So let's head on out there right now. Sounds good, let's do it. And we'll do that next. In our last segment, we explained indoor air quality and what it means for a homeowner, and learned how UV lights installed in your ductwork can help clean and purify the air before it's circulated throughout your home. Now let's continue with our HVAC specialist, Scott Nockreiner, who shares some filtration options that can dramatically improve a home's indoor air quality. Well, Scott, on today's show, we're talking about improving indoor air quality. And would you say it's the easiest way to improve indoor air quality is through filtration? Oh, absolutely. And that's what we're going to take a look at right here is kind of go through a good, better, best scenario to see what are different options that a homeowner has when they look at what type of air filtration system that they want to put in their home. No filter is bad but there is definitely a difference in the quality of filter that you put in. And when you bring up quality, as I look at these, these are way better looking on the surface than when I was a kid and we had the old fiberglass ones you could see through. Yep, and the first one that we're gonna talk about here is a simple one inch filter. Now, you mentioned the fiberglass filters. Now, this filter is actually a MERV 10 filter. It's very thin. That's one of the appealing pieces to it is it's more cost effective. One of the downsides to a filter like this is it actually needs to be replaced monthly. Okay, now you use the term MERV 10. Is MERV a rating system? Yeah, it's actually a rating system. Now, in layman's terms, it essentially just means that the higher the rating, the smaller the particles have to be in order to make it through. So the majority of the particles that are flowing through end up getting caught. Okay, so uh, to a homeowner, they'd be, why should I be worried about that? Well, different allergens out there, different viruses, different indoor air pollutants have different sized particles. If you're allergic to a specific one, you want to make sure you have a high enough MERV rating on the filter, even if it is only a one inch one. Correct. Now we're going to look at this one here. Now this is actually a wider filter and it is a MERV 11 filter as, as you'll see. But the nice thing about this filter is that it's actually a little bit bigger. It has a little bit more surface area, meaning that you only have to replace this filter once a year. Okay. So whereas this one, if you're a diligent homeowner, a one inch every month here, maybe only a year. So even if this is less expensive initially, if you do it 12 times in a year, chances are this one's gonna be more cost effective. Absolutely. Okay, and then this one here, they look a little thinner, but boy, it looks like a lot more surface area, much more efficient. Yeah, and the thing that we're gonna talk about with this one, this actually goes up to a MERV 15, but the biggest difference that you're gonna see in this filter is with the first two, 
they capture the particles. And the particles get caught in there and they, and they get captured. With this one, it is actually a capture and kill technology because of the electrifying field that this system has. So not only does it trap it in there, it actually kills the particles that it traps. Oh, wow, so when I look at this and it's jet black here, those are all dead, killed particles. And this is nice and clean, the obviously new filter there. So is it fair to say this is actually purifying the air versus just cleaning it? Oh, absolutely, and that's kind of the point of, of what we're looking at here is as you pull some of these filters out, you'll, you'll find that some of those particles are actually going to get released back into the air because they are captured, but those particles are not killed. When you pull out a filter like this, even though some of the particles may fall out, you can be very assured that these particles are dead. Kind of defeats the purpose of having this if you're highly susceptible to different allergens. If you go change it on a monthly basis or even an annual basis, you, with this, you have an opportunity to actually have an allergy attack because you inhaled some when you're cleaning it. That is very true. Okay, so that kind of runs through good, better, and best. What did these homeowners opt for? They opted for the capture and kill technology. Now this is the same that we had talked about previously. This is actually the capture and kill technology that we had just discussed. And if you pop off the front here, you're able to actually see the filter that we had looked at. Now what you can see here is it's actually showing the airflow is coming down across. It is electrifying this system so that anything that goes through this filter is being electrified and killed. Okay, and now back at the TSI training center, we talked about how there's a blower motor here. Then you have the burn chamber, you have the plenum where the air conditioning coil is. And the air circulates through the house, and that's why it's so important to have this fan running all the time so that it does circulate all the way through the house, down through, because it doesn't get killed, in this case, with this system, unless those particulates get onto the filter, right? That's true. Unless those particles are moving through the air and being pulled through the ductwork, it is not able to reach this place where it is captured and killed. Okay, well, it's pretty easy. Keep it running. You're going to be, have a very effective system. Now, speaking of how effective the system is, does it actually work on... A coronavirus, for instance? That's a great question. In the year that we're in, there's a lot of questions on, on what things are the most effective in a situation like that. This filter has actually been proven to be 99% effective against a wide variety of coronaviruses, but it's not even just that. Certainly this year we've cared more about of that specific virus, but it has multiple types of influenza, streptococcus. There's, there's a wide variety of viruses that this will capture and kill. And again, the beauty of the system here is it kills it. So any of the allergens that you might be experiencing, I know my son has allergies. If he were to pull it out to change the filter, if he didn't have this, those could become airborne and he'd have an allergy attack. So it's something to definitely consider. And if a homeowner out there doesn't have this system and they want to put it in, is it easy to retrofit it? Yes, it is. Actually, what I would suggest is calling your local contractor who will give you the opportunity to discuss what options can be added here, but almost always you're able to retrofit this. Stick around, we'll look at humidification and dehumidification options next. Earlier in today's show, we learned what the term indoor air quality means for a homeowner and saw some UV lighting and filtration options that can really create a healthier indoor living environment. Now let's see how we can control relative humidity in a home as we continue with our HVAC specialist, Scott Nockreiner. Now Scott, to finish up today's show on indoor air quality, let's cover an aspect that a lot of homeowners out there don't really consider to be indoor air quality, and that's humidification and dehumidification. You're right. When we think about indoor air quality, we're thinking about what are the healthy ways to make the, the air in your home better. Well, one of the other ways you can make your home better is simply by comfort, and that's where humidity comes into play. Now, whether it's having more humidity in the winter to help things like wood floors or to help you just feel more comfortable for as far as cracked lips, a dry nose, or in the summer, if we're looking at trying to decrease the humidity, that system will wring out some of the water that is inside your home. Yeah, well, at first glance, it looks like these homeowners went to the extreme. They have both here. Let's walk through how the system operates. Now, obviously, this is a humidifier. It would be used in the winter months. Yep, now this is a bypass humidifier, and I'll take off the cover here just to kind of show you some of the insides here. Now, this is some of the copper tubing, and this is where the water is actually entering into the humidifier. And as it puts the water in here, it trickles down, and with the warm air coming across, it actually evaporates that water and will put that humidity and that moisture back into the system. Any extra water will then come down the drain and drain back through. Okay, so the copper is the supply line, the water gets trickled down through, 
excess moisture drains out and that humidified air looks like it goes into the return and then it's distributed out throughout the house. That's correct. So what that tells me is it comes back to what we've been talking about throughout today's show, how important it is to keep the airflow moving in any home. Absolutely. Okay, and again, you want it, as I've read in the past, about 40 to 60%, but you want to be careful of the relative humidity in the house in the cold winter months because you don't want any uh, condensation occurring on your lower parts of your windows. That's correct, and actually this is a very advanced system here, but with this system, it will actually look at what the temperature is outside based on what the humidity level is inside, and it will pull down some of that moisture level, the humidity level, to make sure that there is no condensation that happens on the window. I love set it and forget it systems, that's great. Okay, so that takes care of humidification. What about dehumidification in our summer months? Yeah, what this homeowner has is actually they have a dehumidifier as well, and really we're just looking at completely reversing the process as the airflow comes through into this dehumidifier is actually wringing out all the excess moisture that is in this home. Now the biggest times that a dehumidifier is essential is in what we have a lot in Wisconsin is shoulder seasons where it's humid, it can be very damp outside, but it is not warm enough yet to kick on your air conditioner to start wringing out some of that dampness in the house. So when you use the term shoulder seasons, you're talking May, early June or else September, you know, that time when you're not going to be utilizing or running your air conditioning system. This will really help, and this to me is a, a considered a whole house dehumidification system. Yeah, you're right, and, and what it is is when we look at how we put all of this back into the ductwork, what we are able to do is eliminate some of the portable units, whether it is a humidifier or a dehumidifier, you eliminate the need for that and a lot of excess electricity that's used by some of those portable units. Oh yeah, I know I've had houses in the past where we've used those, and not only the cost of electricity to run those, but this has a drain line. I don't have to on a daily basis go and empty out that dehumidifier or go fill the humidifier in the winter months. You're absolutely right. Now, Scott, this is obviously a two or three year old home, new construction, but if I have an older home, is it possible to retrofit either of these or both the systems? Absolutely, both of these systems are very easy to retrofit into a home. I would suggest just talking to your, your local professional. Yeah, you wanna make sure that it's done correctly. Absolutely. But we've covered an awful lot of indoor air quality issues, components, features, technologies on today's show. I wish we had more time, but I appreciate you coming on and showing us this system. Thanks a lot, Stuart. Now here are some key points to help summarize today's show. If you're looking to improve your home's indoor air quality and comfort, consider the following. First of all, remember that in order to clean the air, you need to move the air. So run your furnace fan continuously year round then consider adding some of these components, such as UV lights in the ductwork, pleated filters with a high MERV rating, capture kill filtration and purification, and a whole house humidification and dehumidification system. Adding any or all of these technologies can dramatically improve a home's indoor air quality and comfort. For more information on the products and technologies featured on today's show, contact your local Bryant dealer. An easy-to-use directory can be found at RemodelerTV.com. The preceding was a sponsored program furnished by the Today's Home Remodeler Television Network.